Hey everybody, welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about tire bleeders. We're going to give you all the information you need to know coming up next. Hi, I'm Billy Dietrich, sprint car mechanic and driver. I've been around racing my whole life and it's pretty much all I know. We created this channel to share the good and the bad and everything in between. Our crew may not be the most experienced or professional, but we get it done and we have a good time doing it. We'll show you what it's really like racing weekly at some of the best tracks in Central Pennsylvania. I'm also going to share some sprint car tutorials, mechanics, and parts, and whatever else I feel like. So like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, boy. All right, so we got three different versions of bleeders here. We're going to go through the process of each single bleeder, how we go night to night, clean them, maintain them, show you how they work. And we're going to show you all that each step so you know what to do. All right, so first of all, I'm going to tell you why we use the bleeder and what the purpose of it is. So we got a, a tire right here. When typically we may say run nine pounds of air pressure in a tire. Now, when we're racing, obviously uh, you're you're going fast, and when your tire is building heat because of the friction, where the tire meets the track, the tire is spinning, it builds heat. Well, when you build heat, you build pressure. So let's just say, for example, if we had nine pounds in this tire and we ran a ten lap race, and we had no way of regulating the pressure, which is what the bleeder does, the tire may build say five pounds of pressure over the 10 laps because of the, the heat it builds and the pressure increases. So the bleeder itself is to help assist in maintaining the proper tire pressure you desire. So we'll, we run them in the left rear and the right rear. We don't run them in the front. The front tires don't build any heat, but the right rear tire builds the most heat and the left rear tire obviously would be next to that. So that's why we use bleeders and the purpose of them. Next, we're going to get into the actual techniques and, and what we do to set the bleeders. All right, first of all, we're going to show you what these bleeders are. I got my son Seth here. Seth's done a lot of tire work for myself, for Danny, uh, multiple other people over the last several years. So he's very knowledgeable on setting the bleeders and how they work. But just, just so everybody understands, I'm going to show you these are what we call quick change bleeders. Um, these are There's two different versions of them here. These are what I would call probably the second gen of the, the bleeder system. So we got these quick change bleeders. And then next we got the diaphragm style. Uh, these are technically called Conroy's, uh, just a different uh, version of this. And then third, we got what I would say is the latest version of the bleeder. This is a digital bleeder. Uh, it's made by Jeff Swindell. He has several different versions of this particular style bleeder but there's the three bleeders we're going to demonstrate today and Seth's going to show you next how they all work okay so these are the quick change originals i'm going to call them so i'll pull this apart here for you this would be this big one here is going to be the locking nut and this is the adjuster so you just back it off and you got to be careful because there's springs in here so you got the adjuster out got the springs out of it there's two of them they come apart just like that and then the diaphragm comes out and that little diaphragm sits right in here because right now you can look right through there. So once you do that, you can pull it apart. That's how we clean them. We take a rag with some simple green, pull this all the way off and go over just everything on there and then clean everything back up and put it all back together. So I got all this put back together here and I'm going to show you how to set it using our FSR bleeder tank, which we have in stock here at RUPW. And there's a little rubber earring on here. Sometimes you gotta wet that up. And so you just get a little, just like that. And then you're ready to put it in there. And then I have a couple pounds in here. So let's say you wanna set it for nine. So you just back the adjuster off, listen to it bleed out air. And once it slows down to where you want it at, you just stop it until you hear a little hiss and then you're good. Make your, Locking nut tight, make sure everything's pinched closed so you don't hear any air. And if you do, 
well then you moved it on accident. So you just gotta make sure everything's good. You can always put more air into it and then you're good to go. So the most important part of this whole deal is making sure this is tight and at the pressure you want because if it's not tight and tire goes flat and it's happened, you know, you're running good. Next thing you know, bleeder falls out and everybody's looking at why the tire's flat and you're like, well, the bleeder's in half and then somebody jumps out of the car and smacks the tail tank and you're getting hollered at and that's never fun for anybody. So you don't want to be in that situation. So make sure this is tight or you're going to get hollered at by somebody somewhere. So this is our next bleeder. This is the next, this was the next new thing. It's a Conroy and it's very similar, but there's some differences on it. It's a little bit bigger of a bleeder that slides into the axle and the internals are very similar, but there's a lot of differences. So I'll pull this thing apart here quick. And obviously there's a cap on it again, which is your adjustment. As you can see, the spring is a lot bigger in this one and they make different springs too. So then, so all that over there, it has a little gasket there which helps make it tight and another locking nut. And then on the back here, this all comes apart and there's a little diaphragm in there and then a little screen. And the screen is actually with the air goes out through. So then you have to make sure they're clean too. Cause if they get all clogged up, probably not a good deal. So this diaphragm comes out of here and that's the internals of it. And there's the little diaphragm in there. Right there it is, a little gasket in there, don't lose that, and there's a little metal piece. So all of that is all inclusive in that deal. It helps that bleeder work just a little bit different than the last one. Okay, so we've got this bleeder back together here. I'm gonna show you how to set it, and I'm gonna tell you what the R means. So for me, it's a lot easier to just put an R and an L on them instead of trying to play guess and check at the track. So R is obviously right, L is left. So here's how I set these. You're gonna put it in here, just like the other one. You hear it popping off. If you look at the gauge, it moved a lot, and then it stopped real quick. So, use a little bit more vocal than the other ones, just because of the diaphragm in it. And then you find the pressure you want, make the nut tight on there again, and just like that, once it's tight, don't do that. Make it as tight as you can with your fingers, and you're good to go. I don't put a wrench on them, personally, because when they get hot, then you can't get them apart. So that's just the way I do it. I haven't had one come loose with my fingers yet. So that was your tech tip on that one. All right, so just wanna jump in here and tell you what the difference is between these bleeders. I'm sure you're watching this and wondering why would you use one versus the other. So just uh, let me grab this one here first. So the original quick change bleeder was this red one. We showed you the black one, what the internals look like. This one, uh, base has the same internals. It's smaller in diameter, as you can see, and it has one spring. So there, we really didn't have much adjustment with this as far as changing uh, the pressure. So we, in other words, you had one spring to pick from, and you, you're pretty much in that box, which was okay because it did most it did the job. And then they came out with this dual spring um, quick change bleeder. And then it was a little more accurate, as, as you can see inside the, the Seth called it the diaphragm, the pop off was pretty large in diameter. So it gave you a bigger footprint. And it, I would say it was more accurate for sure than, than this red one. It had dual springs, so you could, you could finely tune the pressure. Now, the, then the Conroy here, as Seth showed you the inside, had that big, big rubber diaphragm. So here again, that, that, uh, I believe allows you to dial it in even more accurate in the way he showed you on the bleeder tank there. You could, you know, you could hear the air shutting off. You know, it wasn't just bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. A lot of times the quick change bleeders, they would, you know, you you'd get them real close and they would still bleed off some air. These, these Conroy's, you can pretty much shut them right off, which makes them nice. Also, they come with multiple spring options. So if you're in an application, let's just say, for example, you're running on asphalt and you needed to up the tire pressure in the right rear to say, I'm just gonna say 15 pounds, where a lot of times on dirt, we're in the eight to 10 pound range. You can change the spring. They have different colored springs when you buy these new and, and it goes the other way also, if you need a lower pressure spring. So you, you can really dial these in with your springs and then the, the diaphragm itself being so large in diameter, it takes a lot of precision as far as the pressure pushing on that diaphragm 
and then the air comes out of this, we call this a stone filter or a muffler, as I showed you. So there's the two differences between the original quick change bleeder and the diaphragm. I would say that, you know, this one's, I would say precise, more, more accurate than the, the quick change one, but there are pros and cons to each one. Um, here again, you only have one bleeder here, um, where a lot of times with these, uh, we would actually have to use two of these in the right rear to maintain the pressure as close as we could because they couldn't quite keep up as fast as this. So there's some of the differences and we're gonna move on to the next style and we'll circle back and hit this again. Okay, so here are these Swindell bleeders. They're electronic. They're a little bit more finicky. As you can see, they turn on, they go through all your settings, what your pressures are, and you adjust them all through here. So there's no real way to set it otherwise. And then you just, boom, you're done. Tells you what pressure you want it at. Now there's a little bit more of a, an area of screw ups with these, I guess, because axles are different. Uh, the inner diameters of axles are different. So these are all different sizes. And the problem people run into with them is the axles are larger than these and they end up going like this and you can knock them out of calibration or you break your hoses off with the plastic ones here right at the end which these plastic pieces right where the metal meets them, they shear off. And with the Australians that I'm helping over here, he was very good at hitting the fence and he was shearing them off right here and the tire would go flat. So we had extra hoses and everything else so we were prepared, but they make these metal ones here, which are nice and they don't break off. So that's a big thing that was nice that we ended up switching to. And there's no real check for these other than air gauge and putting it in your tire and seeing what it stops at. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about these. All right, so Seth gave you a good overview on this Swindell bleeder. So I wanted to come in here and add a few things. Now, first of all, Jeff Swindell, like I said earlier, makes these bleeders. He, he, there is no dealer. We don't have them for sale at the warehouse. You just call Jeff Swindell. You can go on, go on the internet and just type in I think Jeff Swindell bleeders or Jeff Swindell. Call Jeff. He can fix you up. Um, Seth touched on a couple things. He touched on the diameter here, uh, the OD of the of this bleeder. So these pieces on the end, you can change them to the to the desired size of your rear axle. And I also wanted to just circle back and grab this one as well. The same holds true for these. So they make several different ID rear axles. If you got on a standard weight, a light weight, an ultra light. It also varies brand to brand, uh, DMI of Franklin the Winners. Uh, their, their measurements are slightly different. So you're gonna need to know what axle you have or you plan on using before you purchase uh, any of these bleeders because you have to purchase the right size. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting a set of bleeders, you need to know what axle you have, otherwise you, you, you buy the wrong thing and it ain't gonna fit. So that covers that. Let's circle back to this bleeder here. I said earlier, Jeff made a couple different versions of this. This is not the newest version. Uh, he has a, a, a version newer than this one. This one, I would say, is probably the second generation. Um, there are some maintenance features to this bleeder as well. If you, Heather can zoom in here, where these hoses connect to the inside of this bleeder. These pieces actually pop out. I'll, I'll pull one out here real quick. You just, if I get my fat fingers in there, you pull these hoses out and it's hard, you can't really see, but down inside there. So there, there's an actual hex for an Allen wrench. I think it's maybe an eighth of an inch or smaller. I don't recall for sure, but you need to pull them out. And behind that is a screen. So there's a screen you got to clean every once in a while. We ran into this problem already that you'll come in off the track and Corey or, Corey or somebody or Chris will be like, hey, the bleeder's not working right. It's reading the wrong pressure. We don't know why. Well, what happens is over time, the dirt and the wheel, you're racing, it's sucking the air in and out. That screen will get plugged. It's just a real fine screen. You can't take it out, but you pull that fitting out of there and you blow the dirt out of it and then you're good to go again. So. There's one of the maintenance, maybe the only maintenance to this, with the exception of you need to charge it. We flip this over here. Uh, there's a port right there. And when you buy these from Jeff, they're gonna come in a box. Uh, they're actually gonna come with instructions and they're gonna come with two chargers, one for each 
left and right, or there really is no left and right. We mark them left and right, but you can set the pressure wherever you want them. So you gotta have them charged. Uh, you gotta clean them screens in there. And like Seth said, you gotta keep an eye on these ends because they will uh, wear over time. Sometimes they'll actually wear, uh, the OD of this will wear out from going in and out of the, the bleeder receptacle in the wheel, especially if you have aluminum ones. But these are probably the, what I would say the easiest user-friendly bleeder because there's no, you know, there's no mechanics involved. It's just a matter of hitting the button, setting the bleeder, plug and play. That's what a lot of guys have gone through over the years is, is the diaphragm, or excuse me, is the it's electronic bleeder. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the differences between these two, we already talked about these and the quick change. And then we're gonna talk about the price, the price point of all of these. I know you wanna know about the price. So we're gonna get into that next. But first, let's talk about the difference between the Conroy and the Swindell. We kind of hit on it, the obvious difference is this is a digital bleeder. There's no mechanical parts to maintain other than charging it. And the other differences, as you can see, is the size. So uh, we're gonna demonstrate here also how we install these, which is gonna be probably the next biggest difference between these two is how they install in the rear axle. But other than that, you know, the digital part, which, which is like I said, so user friendly, very, uh, here's another thing why we went to this is time. You know, this bleeder takes very, very little time. If you're, if you're like Seth and you're real slick at setting them, which I am not, I, I kind of depend on somebody else doing it or I gotta read the instructions. You can have this set in a matter of seconds. So boom, 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 you say you're in a hurry. Maybe you even have an open red, you need to change tire pressure, hit them buttons. You know, you turn it on, you hit the buttons, boom, 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 you hit set, you're ready to go. Not the case here. You need to pull this out or, you know, you're kind of, I'm gonna say you're almost guessing if you gotta do this in the wheel because you can't, you're, you're depending on A, either hearing it on the fly and you also gotta be able to help somehow read the pressure. So user friendly, these are definitely a lot easier, less time, plug and play, ready to go, more time consuming here for sure. All right, so let's talk about price. Um, let's start here with this, the original quick change bleeder. You can buy this in kit form. You can buy them individually, but the most common way to buy this was in kit form. And the kit came with, I believe, there were several different kits. Um, the most common kit, I believe, was eight bleeders, eight receptacles, which is the piece that goes in the wheel, and then the pump, and, and then the kit, I believe, or I'm sorry, the, the case. I believe that kit was in the 240 to 250 range at one point in time. Um, so that's the price point on these. We don't carry these in the warehouse anymore because we just don't sell that many of them, but... We got our mascot here, a little, <laughs> he likes attention. All right, so we'll move on to the next one, the black style version of the of the quick change. We sell these in the warehouse for roughly $40. It might be 39 bucks and maybe change, but just figure $40 a piece. You buy these individually. Uh, I would say you're gonna need a minimum of three, one in the left rear, two in the right rear, you know, but they don't come with anything else. You're just gonna buy them individually and then you would need to buy the bleeder tank like we showed you uh, earlier. So right, roughly 39 to $40 for the black one. Moving on to the Conroy style, uh, you buy these in a set. So when you buy, you buy these, you buy them in a pair. You get two of them and you basically, this is all you get. You get this, you may get a couple extra uh, pieces of hose my memory serves me right, and maybe a couple ends. But you're looking between 330 and 350 for a set of Conroys. Now, the Swindells. Um, I'm not for sure, for sure on what Jeff's getting for them now. When I bought my new ones several years ago, they were between 12 and 1300 bucks. Um, they they may have gone up since then, like everything else in the world. But here again, you get a pair. At prices for two of them, uh, the case, two chargers, instructions. I believe there was some other um, 
plates in there maybe for for the adjustment sizes and what have but right around between 12 and 1300 bucks for a pair of these and you can find some of these used you know sometimes if you're looking for a set of these you can find them on the marketplace for cheaper than that so there's there's a price points on all this stuff just to put that in your memory bank so I'm here, I'm gonna show you how we put these bleeders in the axles and in the wheels with the easiness of them or how difficult it might be in a rush. Um, these are the Swindells, they have this little pin here, which just goes up and down. If you have older ones, you might have to put a pin actually through it itself, like ours used to be before we got them updated. So you gotta have this hole in the axle. And with that, uh, if you have an older axle, you might have to do it yourself. Most of them come new with holes in them. And then you just slide it in, push the pin, and it locks in. Then you just slide it right into the leader holes like that. And make sure, and you're good to go. And then that's how easy that one goes in. Uh, the one after that, you just push the pin, comes right back out. So there's that one. Then you get into the Conroys, which is pretty easy too. We usually put graphite around the air rings here, helps it slide in a little bit. And if you look in the axle, there's actually grooves that I can go in. If you see right there, there's little pieces that this actually will slide through and it will kind of sit on that O-ring. So you slide these in. They're a little harder to push in sometimes. Need a little extra push like that. And you same thing, you just push it right into the O-ring, pop it right in there. And then when you're done racing, pull it in. Moose makes a bleeder puller, which just piece slides over the nut, put it over. Grab it and just wiggle it and pull it right back out, which is nice. Uh, Moose should still make these. Dad might be able to get them here. Uh, then you get to the old style, which is all you got to do is you just plug it in. Plug it in, ready to go. So that's pretty easy. All of them are very easy. The only thing that struggles sometimes is your left rear brakes on that side. This gets hot you're gonna fight getting it out. But if you have a cooler, it makes it a whole lot easier. All right, I wanted to circle back because I know this, this is probably gonna be a comment or a question in the video. So I wanted to touch on it now. Why don't you run nitrogen in your tires? Then you wouldn't have to worry about regulating the tire pressure. Well, I, guys have done it in the past. Guys don't do it anymore. It's, it's probably, it's very inconvenient. Uh, you figure the size of this tire and trying to pump it up with nitrogen and how you'd have to always have nitrogen on hand, so on and so forth. So I don't know anybody anymore that runs nitrogen in their tire. Yes, and probably eliminate most of this problem, but the convenience factor, or I should say the hassle of trying to pump your tires up with nitrogen, so on and so forth, is why guys don't do it. Expense too, uh, air is pretty much free. <laughs> so there you go, there's, there's the nitrogen question already answered. All right, well, there you go. You got the, the rundown on the bleeder situation. I know a lot of people have been asked over the years, comment on our videos about how they work and what, what we use them, what we use and why we use them. So hopefully this video is helpful. Seth, I appreciate you stepping in, yep. giving all the instruction here. Uh, if you have any questions or, or if you want to you know, purchase anything like that bleeder tank from us or anything at all, if you don't hesitate to give us a call here at the shop, racers doing used parts warehouse. If you have any technical questions, give us a call here as well. You can talk to me, you can talk to Danny. Uh, we we are uh, fully knowledgeable on how all this stuff works. We we grew up doing this stuff for our dad, and then it just rolled right into us doing it too. So we're passing it on to the next generation here with us. So thanks yep. for tuning in. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.